I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on the ternary operator you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So before we look at the ternary operator, I wanna do a quick recap of if statement conditions. If statements can evaluate a multiple number of conditions. We can evaluate a single condition, like in this code over here, where we just have a single if statement, checking if the battery level is less than 20. When I say single condition, I just mean we have a single if statement. We can have a binary condition, which looks like this, where we have an if and else statement, where the outcome of this is binary. Either they're speeding or they're under the limit. It's binary, meaning there's one of two possible outcomes. We can also have multi-conditions, like in this example over here, where we have a series of if, else if, and else statements. Now there exists a special operator for binary conditions, this middle case over here, and this is called the ternary operator. The ternary operator is a concise way to write a binary if else statement in a single line. It looks like this. Okay, there's a lot flying around here. Let's go break this down step by step. On the far left, we have our condition. This is checking, is the speed greater than the speed limit? We then have a question mark, which you can kind of think of as asking the question, is the speed greater than the speed limit? This is then followed by our true outcome. In this case, it would be the string speeding. We then have a colon, which separates the true outcome to the false outcome, which in this case is the string under the limit. So on the far left is our condition we're checking, which in an if statement would appear in our brackets. We then have a question mark followed by the true outcome, which would appear inside the code block of an if statement. We have a colon followed by false which would ordinarily be contained in the else code block. Now it is common to store a ternary operator's result in a variable for later use. So most of the time, we're gonna be writing code that looks like this, where we have a variable like let message equal our ternary operator, whereby the result is stored in a variable. So for example, let's say speed is greater than speed limit, that is the true case, we would now have a variable storing the value speeding. If speed is less than speed limit, that would result in false, which means that our message will now contain the string under the limit. So let's go play around with the ternary operator inside VS Code. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up an index.html file and linked a JavaScript file script.js, which is currently empty. I'm gonna do two examples. In the first example, I'm gonna use the ternary operator to output a message on whether a shopping cart on an e-commerce website has items in it or doesn't. I'm gonna declare a variable, let cart items equal five. So now let's go use the ternary operator. The first part of the ternary operator contains the condition. So I'm gonna write cart items greater than zero. We then have our question mark. And you can think of this in plain English as is our cart items greater than zero. We then follow this by our true case. So if this is true, we would write, you have items in your cart. We then have our colon and we add in our false case. So this would be, your cart is empty. Now this is our ternary operator, but as I've mentioned, it's common to store this result in a variable. So we'll declare a variable, let message equal the result of this ternary operator. And then I'm just gonna output the message to the console. So console.log message. All right, let's go check this out in the console. All right, you can see we get here the message, you have items in your cart. Let's walk through why this is happening. Our cart items is equal to five. This is evaluated to true because five is greater than zero. And because it's true, our true case runs over here. You have items in your cart. Changing this back, if I now change this to zero, this is now is zero greater than zero. This is false, which means that our false case will run over here. So let's check that out. I'll refresh and you can see we get your cart is empty. Now there's actually a cleaner way to write this using truthy or falsy values. We can just put cart items over here. Let's talk about why this works. I'm gonna change this back to five. I'll refresh and you can see we get, we have items in your cart. Five is a truthy value. And just like in an if statement condition, over here is a Boolean context. So this is five, which then gets converted to true because five is a truthy value inside a Boolean context. And because this is true, this over here runs. Let me change it back. If I change this value to zero and refresh, we get your cart is empty. Zero is a falsy value. 
So cart items is zero. Inside this Boolean context, zero gets converted to false. And that means that this will run over here. So truthy and falsy values can be used inside our ternary operator condition as well. Because at the end of the day, it is a Boolean context. All right, let me just change this back to cart items. For the second example, we're going to be outputting a message to the console either to give a user a discount or not. I'm going to declare a variable let is member equal to true and let has coupon equal to false. I'll first write our ternary operator. The condition will be is member strictly equal to true and has coupon strictly equal to true. If that's the case, we'll get the string 20% discount. We then add our colon. And then for the false case, we'll write no discount. I'm then going to store the result of this in a variable. So let discount message equal the result of the ternary operator. And then I'm just going to output to the console discount message. Okay, I'll refresh. And you can see we get no discount. The reason we're getting that back is because is member strictly equal to true. This is true equal to true, which is true. And has coupon strictly equals true. This is false equals true where the outcome of this is false. Now evaluating this, we have true and false. Now for logical and, we need both of them to be true to run the true statement. So the outcome of this is false, which means that the variable discount message is going to get the value no discount. So we end up with this. All right, putting it back to where it was. Let's now go change the value of has coupon to true. Stepping through this, we have true equals true and true equals true. True does equal true, which is true. True also equals true here, which is true. And for logical and to be true, both of these need to be true, which they are. So this is now true. Because this is true, we'll get 20% discount, which now means our discount message will store the string 20% discount. All right, just to pop it all back, let's see this in action. I'll refresh, and we now get 20% discount. Now, once again, we can use truthy and falsy values here. We don't need to do this direct comparison. So I can remove this. And I can remove this. We can do this because this condition is evaluating a Boolean context, which means that our values is member and has coupon will be converted to Boolean true or false. And because true is a truthy value, they're both going to be converted to true. So now we'll be taking a look at comparing the ternary operator and the if statement. Ternary operators and if else achieve the same binary result. Let's first take a look at an example of an if else statement. This example we saw earlier, we were checking if the speed is greater than the speed limit. It's binary because there's two outcomes, either speeding or under the limit. This exact same logic can be written with the ternary operator. And it would look like this, where we have let message equals our ternary operator, where the condition is the same, speed greater than speed limit. We then have our question mark followed by our true outcome, which is speeding, our colon followed by our false outcome, which is under the limit. And then we're outputting that message to the console. So if else and ternary operator can be written to achieve the exact same thing. So now your big question is, well, what do I use when? And this is something that when I started learning JavaScript wasn't really explained so well to me. I don't want you to have the same experience I had, and I really want you to understand the difference of when it's being used. So the ternary operator is more compact, while if statements are more flexible. There are two main use cases of when you want to use the ternary operator over an if else statement. The first case is for variable conditional assignment. What this means is when we want to assign a value to a variable depending on a condition. So looking at the ternary operator here, we have let discount equals is member question mark 15 colon zero. So the value of discount is going to be 15 or zero depending on if they are a member. If they are a member, the discount will be 15. And if they're not a member, the discount will be zero. So we're creating a variable, but the value of that variable is dependent on a condition. In this case, if they are a member or if they're not a member. So this is the first use case of the ternary operator, variable conditional assignment. The next major use case of the ternary operator, which we've been playing around with so far, is short messages. So for example, we saw this block of code earlier where we want to output a message to the console, but the value of the message depends on the evaluation of the ternary operator. Now, in actual fact, this example of the speed greater than speed limit is also a variable conditional assignment because we're assigning the variable message either with speeding or under the limit, 
depending on the condition. However, the main purpose here is to output a message. In the previous example, where we're setting the discount to a value of 15 or zero, the aim there is not to output a message, but to give the variable discount a value depending on the condition. So yes, in both cases, variable conditional assignment is happening, but in the second case, it's being used specifically to output a short message. Now for if statements, they're commonly used for single conditions, like setting the seat price on a flight booking website, depending on how many seats are left. In this case, you can see we have a single if statement. It's not binary or multi-condition. The next common case for if statements is standard branching logic, where if our user is a member, we would ordinarily want to run several lines of code, or if they're not a member, we would also in that case run several lines of code, which would be different. Now standard branching logic is the binary case, but what's really important to realize here is that typically the if and else block can contain multiple lines of code. We're using if and else to set core logic in our program. It's not being used to set the value of a variable or to output a short message. The final use case of if statements are multiple conditions, which we've seen earlier with setting a grade. And in this case, it's common to use if, else if, and else to allow for multiple conditions. Now I know it can be overwhelming learning about the ternary operator, which kind of does the same thing as a binary if statement, that is if else, but is used in certain circumstances. As a general rule of thumb, if statements are more commonly used. So don't freak out too much about the ternary operator. Just know they are used for specific circumstances like I've shown here, but the if statement is going to be used a lot more in your code. So let's quickly just compare the ternary operator and if statements to really make it crystal clear the differences between them. I'll be summarizing in this table where I'll be looking at when to use each of them, its length and readability. The ternary operator is used in simple binary conditional variable assignments and short messages, where if statements are used for single conditions and more complex binary and multi-condition logic. The length of a ternary operator is typically compact and single line, whereas if statements are multiple lines for more complex control flow. For readability, ternary operators are more concise but can be harder to read for complex logic which is why we only use them for conditional variable assignment and short messages. For if statements, the readability is easier to follow when logic is more complex. So let's take a look at the ternary operator in action. Back on our EasyJet webpage, the ternary operator would be used to output this kind of message here. Sign in to manage your account and bookings. The logic would look like this. We'd have a variable, let user logged in, which currently has no variable assigned to it. We would then have a variable welcome message, which is being assigned the outcome of the ternary operator. In this case, we have user logged in, where we're assessing a truthy or falsy value. If it's true, we get welcome back. And if it's false, we get sign in to manage your account and bookings. So in our case, because we've declared a variable user logged in, but it has no value, it would be undefined. Undefined is a falsy value, which means that the outcome of the ternary operator would be the false part, which is sign in to manage your account and bookings which means that our welcome message will now have the value assigned to it, sign in to manage your account and bookings. And we could then output this welcome message to the console. So let's wrap up by building a summary card, the ternary operator. The ternary operator is a concise way to handle binary conditions in a single line. We saw the syntax looks like this, where on the far left, we have our condition. We then have a question mark, which we can think of in plain English, like is the speed greater than speed limit? After the question mark, we have our true outcome, which is the string speeding. We then follow this with a colon, but we then have our false outcome, which in this case is the string under the limit. We saw the ternary operator is used in two circumstances. The first is in variable conditional assignment, where we can assign the variable discount, the value 15 or zero, depending on whether is member is true or false. In this case, the variable discount will store the value 15 because is member is true. The next use case of the ternary operator is in short messages, where inside the variable message, we can store the string speeding or under the limit, depending on how the condition evaluates. Now that you've mastered the theory so far in this video, it's important to understand how we can apply it in a real world project. If you haven't been following along in other parts before this, I recommend you download the starter files in the description below and code along with me. This project is part of my JavaScript full course. You can join me for free on YouTube by clicking the video appearing in the top right now. So in our BMI project, we're now up to the last step, 
where we're going to be adding the ternary operator. So let's jump into VS Code and add this in. At the moment in our project, we're taking in this gender variable, which is either M or F, but at the moment, we're not actually doing anything with it. What I'd like to now do is personalize our output message a bit more to give different output text depending on whether the user is male or female. So I'm going to declare down here a new variable, let message equal, and now I'm going to go use the ternary operator. We'll grab our condition. I want to check is gender strictly equal to M. I then grab our question mark and write the true part. I'm just going to copy the temperate literal over here. I'm just going to add the text at the start, hey bro, with a comma. So if gender is male, this will be our message. For the false part, I'm going to copy this message. I'll paste it here. And I'm just going to change bro to broette, which is the female version of a bro. So whatever the outcome of the ternary operator will be assigned to the variable message. So now for console.log, I'm just going to go replace what I had here with message. Okay, let's check this out in the console. I'll enter my weight in kilograms, 80, my height in meters, 1.75, and M for male. And I get back the message, hey bro, your BMI is this, which is overweight. Let's now go enter this as a female. I'll enter weight of 70 kilos, height of 1.8, and F for female. And you can see now the message is, hey broette, your BMI is this, which is healthy. So the ternary operator is being used just to write a simple message. You would never use the ternary operator over here. The first reason is because this is not binary. There are multiple checks being done. And secondly, this is driving core logic in our program. As we've seen earlier, the ternary operator is either used for simple variable conditional assignment or used to output simple messages, like we're doing over here. Now this brings our BMI project to an end. This is a great first start to getting your feet wet with JavaScript. We've learned some really important basics that are going to form a great foundation as we continue to move through this course. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.